If you're anything like me, you go to a lot of concerts or you work at a lot of concerts, whether you work at a venue or you work for a band on tour and everybody knows how loud it gets at live shows, but not everybody knows how much damage you might actually be doing to your hearing while attending those shows. Welcome to the channel, everybody. My name's Tank and today we're going to be discussing how going to concerts with no hearing protection might be causing you some permanent long-term hearing loss. And before we really get going here, I just wanna take a second to thank Eargasm Earplugs for sponsoring this video. And I know what a lot of you are thinking. You're like, well, oh, pretty convenient that an ear protection company is sponsoring this video. And you're right, I'm not gonna lie. But a lot of you that follow this channel know that I don't advertise stuff normally. I don't sponsor a lot of things unless I really believe in it and it's something I really like. And the truth is, I've been using Eargasm products for years now, way before I even talked to them or told them my idea about this video. So we're gonna talk a little about hearing loss and then later on we'll talk about them and the ways that you can actually protect your hearing at shows. One of the most important things that we need to address while talking about sound levels and how they affect the human ear is decibel levels. And it's a term that probably a lot of people are familiar with when you're talking about how loud things are or you at least know the abbreviation that you see next to the numbers, which is the lowercase d and the uppercase b. But the thing is, there's a lot of different weighting systems for decibel readings. You've got A weighting, C weighting, and Z weighting. But 99% of the time people are talking about decibel levels, they're talking about it being A weighted because the A weight actually adjusts the sound pressure level readings to the sensitivity of the human ear. So it is the most relevant for what we're talking about. So for the rest of this video, anytime we're talking about decibel levels, we are talking about it being A weighted because that is what affects the human ear the most. Now, I wish that I knew more about this stuff at an earlier age. I spent years early on in my roadie career not protecting my hearing at all. And some of that was because I didn't know anything about this. And another part of it was because I had a certain level of ignorance to it. I didn't want to put anything in my ears and dampen the sound. And I wanted to hear everything as natural as possible. But right now at the age of 35, I am absolutely 100% suffering the effects of not protecting my ears. And the thing is, most people that go to concerts or work around loud environments are gonna have some kind of hearing loss or impairment by the age of 65. But if you work in one of those environments long-term, say you're a musician or a roadie or work at a venue, you're gonna start getting those effects at a way younger age. Most scientists agree that you can safely listen to noise levels of up to 86 decibels for up to eight hours without suffering any kind of long-term hearing damage. But if you take that decibel level up to 100, just 14 decibels higher, you can actually induce some kind of long-term damage in up to 15 minutes. And most rock concerts and metal concerts, and a lot of concerts in general, average between 95 decibels on the low end to 115 decibels on the high end. And if you're taking it up to 115 decibels and you have no hearing protection, that damage is gonna set in so fast. And a lot of concerts that I've been to have been that high. One time I took my wife to go see Korn at the arena here in Nashville. One of my friends was working on the audio team and let us stand at front of house while they were mixing the show. And I watched their decibel meter while the show started. It was at 119 decibels and I don't know how many people in that crowd were wearing earplugs or some kind of hearing protection, but at that level, I would be willing to guess that a lot of people that night left the concert with their ears ringing and suffered some kind of damage from listening to that concert at that level. Now, before we go any further, I'm not going to say it's the band's fault or the mixing engineer's fault because people could wear ear protection if they wanted to but a lot of people don't. And that's what we're kind of trying to do in this video is to show you the importance of hearing protection. Now, a lot of us in the music industry, whether you're a roadie like me or a musician playing on stage, 
Our go-to form of hearing protection is in-ear monitors, commonly abbreviated as IEMs. And I've put mine on so you can see they just fit into your ears just like this, and they can be easily taken out if you need to hear around you. But these are custom fitted. When you get them made, you go to an audiologist and you get a mold of your ear canal, and then you send them to the in-ear monitor company of your choice, and they make these custom molds for you. Not only do they block out the noise, but they actually allow you to hear what you want to hear at a reasonable level. You plug these into a wireless pack that you can wear on your belt, and you can control the level of that pack that's going to your ears. So a lot of concerts nowadays, that's what musicians are using, and their monitor engineers on the side of the stage will control what goes into their ears, and they can easily tell them they want more vocals or less guitars or more drums. I gotta have more cowbell. That's what we all use so that we can hear what's going on while also being safe about it. And there are a lot of great in-ear monitor companies out there. They range in different quality and different prices. I've used quite a few over the years, but since 2015, I've been using in-ear monitors from JH Audio. A lot of you guys that follow this channel know that because I've toured with Jerry Harvey, the owner of JH Audio, and he is known as one of the pioneers in in-ear monitor technology in the music industry. In my opinion, there's no better company for in-ears if you're using them professionally, but there are a lot of other companies that other people prefer. But what if you're not a musician or a roadie and you have absolutely no need for custom fitted in-ear monitors and don't want to spend the money that they cost? Well, everybody's familiar with these. Yeah, the cheap foam earplugs that you can get at drug stores, home improvement stores, and a lot of merch tables that shows sell these to the people that want them. This is an option. I'm not going to say a good option, but it's better than nothing. If you're going to a concert and this is your only option for hearing protection, it's worth using them. However, it does come at a big cost to the sound quality that you're going to be hearing. Anybody that's worn these can tell you Everything gets super muffled. There's a lot of low end in these. It cuts out high and mid frequencies, which is a bummer for a lot of concert goers that actually want to hear like the real sound of the concert and the instruments. That is why I love Eargasm products so much because they have found a way to reduce decibel levels safely while also not losing sound quality at all. Now, I first heard of Eargasm earplugs while I was on tour. We were doing shows out on the West Coast in California, where they're from, and they had somebody from their company backstage at the shows that was telling us about these and gave a lot of us a pair to wear that night to just check out. So when we finished our show, I went and watched some of the other bands and I was blown away because I could tell right away that the decibel level was taken down considerably, but I wasn't losing anything in the sound quality. A lot of the times, like we were talking about with other earplugs, like the foam ones, you lose the highs and mids, but I wasn't losing any of that with these. And since then, they've become my go-to. For any concert I go to, I'm always wearing these because I can still hear everything great at a safe and reasonable level. And I've had quite a few pairs of these over the years. I'm honestly horrible at keeping track of things. I throw things places on a tour bus, they disappear, they're never found again. But then we all got sent home from tour due to the COVID pandemic, and then nobody was going to concerts. But now that we're going to concerts again, I recently bought a new pair of these. That's right, YouTube advertisement guidelines. They did not send these to me for free. I bought these and I want to show them to you. So this is the new gold edition that I just bought recently. Um, there's really no difference from the normal earplugs. I'm just a sucker for limited edition things, but you can see the box is pretty cool, man. The packaging is awesome. Let's be real. Nobody's going to carry these around in the actual box, but when you open it, you can see there is this really sick little travel case that you can put your earplugs in and it hooks right onto a key ring. So if you're going to a concert or going anywhere else with loud noise, you can keep it on your keys and they're available at all times. And then on the left over here, you've got your actual earplugs, which look like this. They're awesome because they've got the little tab on the outside right there that you can see that allows for easy removal from your ears. And then on the right, you've got different sized interchangeable plugs that you can put on them, which is great because every person's ear canal is different. So the fact that you have the option to change it out if you want to is great. 
And Eargasm actually offers more products than just the earplugs that I was just showing you. Aside from their high fidelity earplugs, they have a lot of different options. They have stuff that you can use while flying. They have stuff that you can use while you're swimming or in water. They have bundles. And one of my favorite things on here is that they have the smaller ears earplugs, which are great for if you want to take your kids to shows too and not have to worry about that long-term hearing damage for them. They have accessories like a lanyard for your actual carrying case. So if you don't want to put it on your keys, you can wear it around your neck. They've got connector cords for your earplugs so you can connect them together if you're afraid of losing one of them. They also have some custom options. They have custom high fidelity earplugs and they even have custom in-ear headphones that you can check out as well. But again, I don't go to concerts anymore without using my Eargasm earplugs. I just don't, man. Everything sounds great. It reduces the incoming decibel level and I don't have to worry about messing up my ears any more than I probably already have. So if you want to check out more from Eargasm and find out how you can protect your hearing at concerts while also still hearing the concert as it's supposed to be heard, check the link in the description or the link in the pinned comment on this video. Or if you just go to their website and find something you want, make sure to use the code TANK10 while you check out for 10% off your entire order. Thank you one more time to Eargasm Earplugs for not only making a great product that I actually like and use, but for also sponsoring this video. But let's say nothing in this video has convinced you and you're still like old me that's like, I wanna go to a concert and just hear it naturally with my own ears, how it's meant to be heard. Let's talk about the effects of this and what could possibly happen. Because there was a study in 2016 of some concert goers that they found that only 8% of those concert goers that actually used hearing protection with at least an 18 decibel reduction, only 8% suffered some kind of long-term hearing loss. But in contrast to that, 42% of those concert goers that used no hearing protection at all suffered long-term hearing loss. That's almost one in two people. What your brain processes as sound is actually just electrical signals, like every other sense that we have. And I'm not a scientist, so I'm going to explain this very simple, but there are tiny little hairs in your inner ear that when sound waves hit them, it sends that electrical signal to your brain, and then your brain processes the sound. But over time, or from exposure to loud sound, some of those hairs in your ear can be damaged, and then they basically send phantom signals to your brain which then processes stuff that's really not even there. One of the most common things that people get suffering from long-term hearing impairment is tinnitus. And tinnitus absolutely sucks. I have it and I don't even have it that bad and it sucks. And most people that are concert goers or work in audio or just loud environments have probably heard somebody talk about tinnitus before. And the most common example of it is just a ringing in your ears, like a high-pitched ringing in your ears. But tinnitus actually comes in many forms. It could be a high-pitched ringing in your ears. It could sound like static. It could be a roar. It could be clicking. It can be a lot of different things. And it can come and go. But as damage keeps increasing, it might be a permanent thing. For some people that have tinnitus, it's always there. It doesn't go away and they have to learn to just live with it. And from some studies that I've read, it can actually affect people mentally because that noise never goes away. It starts eating at them. They have to learn how to, you know, cancel out that noise and ignore it. And sometimes it's just too much. My tinnitus comes and goes. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it is a very high pitched loud ringing and it is ridiculous. Like whenever it happens, it is absolutely so annoying that I can't ignore it. And that is one of those things that you can hopefully avoid by protecting your ears at an earlier age. And tinnitus is actually so common that it's estimated that it affects 15 to 20% of all people not just older people. Now, if you're 65 or older, that stat goes way up because tinnitus and hearing loss and hearing impairment does increase as you get older. But as we've talked about in this video, it can also just happen from hearing damage while you're younger. 
And the other alarming thing about this is that it can actually set in after some kind of respiratory infection. And that is actually a cause for concern. If you do suddenly develop tinnitus, like that ringing or noisiness in your ears when you've never had it before and it comes after some kind of upper respiratory infection, do not ignore that. You should actually go see a doctor because that is usually a sign of something more severe than just the tinnitus itself. But what have we learned today? Well, if you've been paying attention, it's probably... Don't be like younger me. Take your hearing protection seriously. And then you won't wind up with minor hearing loss and random bouts of tinnitus because it sucks. Protect your hearing. If you're on a stage, get some in-ear monitors. If you're going to concerts, do what I do. Use eargasm earplugs. And if you can't find anything else, at the very least, use those foam earplugs because something is absolutely better than nothing. But thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. If you're new here, feel free to click subscribe. I release new videos all the time from stuff like this to behind the scenes in the music industry, reactions, and a whole bunch of other stuff. If you liked the video, feel free to like it. If you disliked it, feel free to dislike it. Just know that I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. I'm on a ton of different social media. I even have a Discord server that a lot of us hang on. I have a Twitch that I stream on. So if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff, all the links will be in the description to this video. My handle on everything social media is at Tank the Tech. Thank you so very much for watching. Wherever you are in the world, be safe, be kind to each other, and I'll be back very soon with another video.